Let's go ahead and get started, guys. Welcome to our weekly outlook. Thank you guys for joining us today. This is the weekly outlook for the week of September 2nd. It is a brand new month. We just finished off August. Um, I'm excited to get into September. There's a lot of news, a lot of things that should make the markets move this week and this month. Um, but let's jump right into things, guys. Uh, very, first and foremost, I just want you guys to know, please do not be using this information as financial advice. This is just for uh, informational and educational purposes, guys. These are my own opinions on the markets. This is what I think is going to happen. So um, please remember that and only be entering trades based off of your guys' own analysis. But this should just help assist you guys um, with what, uh, if you guys want to know what my opinion is. So this week, guys, big thing is on Friday, we have NFP. So just be prepared for that um, non-farm payrolls Friday morning. So big thing, first Friday of the month, we can expect that to be a market mover for um, pretty much any pair that has the US dollar involved with it. Euro USD will probably move pretty uh, quite a bit as well. Um, Thursday, precursor to that, we have ADP non-farm employment change. And there's a couple other things to just speak on this week. Wednesday, we have an interest rate decision from the Bank of Canada. And then we also have... Uh, an interest rate decision for the Australian dollar from the Reserve Bank of Australia on Tuesday. So um, big, definitely a big week in as far as fundamentals goes. That's two interest rate decisions and one um, NFP. Uh, and then there's a lot of other red folders as well. So I'm not, I, I don't have time to go into every single red folder, but those are the main things that I'm going to be watching for. So let's go over some setups. This is what I am um, interested in trading this week. Um, so if you guys see these three pairs right here, we're going to go into those. But very first, I just want to very quickly look at the dollar index. So um, if you guys have been following along with the weekly outlooks for a while now, um, we've been pretty spot on with our bias of what happened. If you guys rem remember, for quite a while, the dollar was pretty consolidated. It was kind of, it made like a bit of a bull flag. Uh, we were expecting a breakout. I hope, told you guys for a while now that I've been long on the dollar. We did get that breakout. Um, once we saw this weekly candle close bearish, um, not last week and not the week before last, but three weeks ago, um, we called a correction down on the dollar. And I'm still since been long looking for, you know, my, I am still long on the dollar, which means I'm still bearish on Euro USD overall, the long-term trend, right? And when I talk about the long-term trend, you know, in relationship to the dollar index, we can see earlier this year in May when the dollar broke out of its bearish trend. So pretty much since around this time here on the charts, we can see a clear bullish uptrend on the dollar and um, I think it's going to continue that way. I also am a big fan of the way the weekly candle just closed this past week. So if we break this down onto the, that's the weekly chart, by the way. So if we break this down onto the daily chart, we can see that last week we found some support around this trend line. Um, I had mentioned one possible setup that maybe to induce some sellers and stop out um, early sellers in the market. I thought we might see the dollar go a little bit further and Euro USD go a little bit higher. Um, turned out obviously not the case. We saw Euro USD reversed, which we're going to look at right now. And we saw uh, the dollar index obviously right here is reversed as well and had some bullish momentum towards the end of last week. Uh, I'm probably going to expect this bullish momentum to continue. I'm definitely long on the dollar, but um, we're at a very significant area where we found it's this is a very significant uh, supply level for the dollar and we've seen some resistance around here in the past so we could see maybe a consolidative week for the dollar but overall i am still bullish on the dollar so moving into setups that i am looking for this week um if you guys have been paying attention inside of telegram if you're um been watching the weekly outlooks i did um Post this this setup, I, and, and this is what I mean with the dollar. I would have liked the dollar to fall just a little bit more, which would have meant Euro USD would have gone a little bit higher. Um, this around this region, the 118 area, would have been um, an ideal selling uh, area for me. We didn't quite see it move that high, and it is moving down. So I'm definitely watching Euro USD. Um, I still have been bearish on Euro USD um, for a while now, ever since, really, ever since we've this kind of consolidation happened and we broke out. This has definitely been very bearish. And just to support this analysis on the weekly time frame as well for selling Euro USD, 
we can see a very nice pin bar was created on the weekly time frame. So nice bearish momentum. So um, this isn't my favorite setup. I mean, it does look pretty clean, but um, I'm actually, I'm, we're, we're going to look at these two setups right now. And I, I kind of prefer these over Euro, or over Euro USD, to be honest. The first one is CAD yen. Um, if again, if you guys have been following along with the weekly outlooks, um, you'll know that this was a while ago, a couple weeks ago. Um, and also inside of my Slack channel, um, with the signals I gave out, we took a sell on CAD yen on this drop right here. We were looking, we would have liked to have seen this momentum continue. Obviously we've been on the sidelines. We haven't touched this pair since we've just kind of been watching it and I've still been looking to get short on CAD yen. If you guys remember, um, this original analysis with this thousand pit move down and a lot of sideways consolidation, a little bit of a wedge happening here. Um, we could see a, a big move down, a nice swing on CAD yen. So this is something that I'm looking for. Um, also to support that analysis, I really like the bearish pin bar that was created on the weekly time frame. Once again, where we've seen major, major, major supply for this area. Um, just exhaustiveness from the sellers, um, or I'm sorry, exhaustiveness from the buyers and sellers coming into the market around this area, just right around above the 50, 85 area. Um, just a lot of selling pressure around here. We've also got the 50 EMA in play here. So a um, lot of confluence for selling this pair. Um, if you guys are in Slack or you guys are connected to my trade copier, more than likely this is a trade that we're going to, that you guys can probably expect to see inside of your um, accounts this week and then an, a pair that has confluence to selling CAD yen and is also supportive of selling Euro USD and just overall supportive of buying the dollar is a potential buy on USD CAD. So again, if you guys have been following along with the weekly outlooks, uh, we, we just barely missed our buy zone. Um, I had marked off, especially if you guys are watching the daily webinars, if you guys are in my um, private group, I was mentioning that on the, we had a nice descending channel on USD CAD and I would have liked to have get a buy a little bit lower. Yes, we did drop pretty nicely, but we didn't, we were, it's, it's just like Euro USD where we were just about, you know, 75 to hundred pips off from the sell zone, USD CAD, same thing, 75 to hundred pips off on our buy zone. I would have liked to get just a little bit lower just so we can get that, just so we could have gotten that amazing risk to reward ratio. Um, Unfortunately, sadly, that didn't happen. Late last week, we did see um, an early correction in, in price move up, but that doesn't mean that we're going to miss this move. I mean, if we break out of this channel and we continue to the upside with USD CAD, we can probably expect at the bare minimum, probably retesting our previous yearly highs, which is a nice 400 pips up still. So um, again, that has a lot of confluence to shorting CAD yen. Um, it has confluence to shorting Euro USD. It has confluence to the dollar index strengthening. Um, generally, when we see the dollar strengthen, we're also going to see gold fall. So I'm, I'm also bearish on gold. I'm expecting gold to go down. I've told you guys for a while. And, and again, mark my words, guys. I mean, I, I, before the end of the year, you know, you guys are hearing it first. If you, if, if you haven't already heard it from somebody else, I'm pretty sure I'm, gold is going to move down towards 11 and then a thousand dollars. That's what um, my next target is, but we're finding some really nice resistance around the 1200. So 1150 would be the next appropriate level um, to be targeting on this pair. And of course um, we know that gold, and if you don't know, you should write this down that gold and USD CAD have a negative correlation to each other. So everything is, uh, you know, supportive of each other and that's, that's what we call confluence. So, that is pretty much it guys. Um, these weekly outlooks, I don't really want to like drag you guys around, um, with pairs that I'm not interested in trading and pretty much the rest of the market. I'm not interested in trading right now. You know, if something changes, obviously I'll update you guys if you're in my daily webinars, but, um, if not, I will see you guys on next week's weekly outlook. Um, I am currently spending Labor Day weekend in Vegas. As you guys can tell I'm up in my hotel room right now. If any of you guys are out here in Vegas and want to link up, um, grab lunch or grab a drink like that. Uh, shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere, get a hold of me and we'll find a time to do that. But other than that, guys, uh, appreciate you guys. And I will see you guys next week. And for everybody else, I'll see you guys on tomorrow's daily live webinar. Take care guys.